I have a bunch of TikToks in my favorites, which I can easily see on my iPad. I used to be able to see it on my website, and sometimes I would be able to uh, share that with you guys on YouTube in the description box so you could watch the TikTok that I just watched. But I don't see how to do that anymore. I don't know. I looked everywhere, and I can't find my favorites. So I want to uh, read something from a TikTok and I will just tell you that it's from one of my favorite TikTokers, which is abuse underscore is underscore abuse. And somebody had commented, and then she commented on that comment. And I'm also going to comment on that comment because it hit home with me, and it might hit home with some of you. All right. It says, My dad taught me how to do the tasks he asked me to do. My mom expected me to just know how to do it and to do it right the first time. And I was like, yes, I totally understand that. And I've always said how my father taught me things that stayed with me all my life. He taught me about business, not like big, gigantic business lessons, but as a small child, if I wanted something, he would show me how to nail a lard in his uh, lobster traps in the cellar. And, you know, I always look back and say, he took time to, to show me those things. I'm sure he would have rather just built his traps and not have to show me stuff. But he did show me stuff, and then he would say, you know, if you work, you can have the things that you want. So that always stayed with me. And he taught me, you know, just other things like um, walking a rope. I used to walk the rope that he needed, that he would coil up, that would be attached to the lobster trap, and the rope had to be a certain length. And he would say, would you like to work with me? I was as young as three in pictures, and you can see me. He would have me walk to a certain tree or something. He would stand. I would take the end of the rope, and I would walk to that tree. And that meant it was long enough, and so he would coil it up. I would come back and get the end of the rope again and do it again so he could have all his coils. And I always felt so special even that young, because I knew I was helping him. I don't remember getting paid. I was just a little child, but I liked that I helped him. I liked that he involved me in the stuff he was doing. Another thing he did is he built me uh, a playground in the trees, in the woods. <laughs> I lived right next to a wooded area. And he would show me how he was going to, uh, you know, attach a swing or how he made my teeter-totter and how he gave me a box with bricks on the other end of the teeter-totter so I could, uh, you know, play all alone. I didn't need somebody on the other end. I could take bricks out or put them in as needed. But I just always felt special because he would take the time to show me things. My mother, on the other hand, I don't remember my mother showing me how to do jack shit in the house. And now I know that's why I am the way I am, or I was the way I was while I was living in that old house. I don't remember her ever showing me how to do the dishes. I do remember doing dishes very young because I had to take care of her when she was sick and dying all the time. And I just wanted everything to always be neat and clean. My mother was a neat freak. Everything had to be clean, put in its place. She was constantly doing housework. And, you know, so I grew up in a very, very clean home. And um, when I would clean something, she would do it right behind me. Or she would say, uh, just don't even bother to do that. You don't do it good enough. And I was just a little kid. So that was very different than the messages I was getting from my father. My father never told me I didn't do anything right. You know, even if I was washing his lobster boat down at the end of the day, and you know, never did he say, hey, you didn't get that. No, don't do it. You don't do it right. Never. I never was told I, I didn't do anything right. 
And when I did stuff on my own, he would praise me and say, wow, that was really good. That was really creative. And he didn't even say things like, but you know, next time you could do that. No, he just left it as, as that, you know, it was a good job. And I always felt good about that. My mother, another video, uh, she very much tried to break the relationship with my father, and she did succeed. Like, all through my teenage years, I wanted absolutely nothing to do with him. She had convinced me he was the evil of the family. Back to uh, my mother's tasks. Doing dishes was not good enough. Vacuuming was not good enough. Dusting, it wasn't good enough. And there came a time that, you know, I just didn't want to bother. Again, probably in my teen years, even my bedroom, my bedroom, she would come in and do all kinds of things. And I felt like my privacy was invaded. And, you know, she used to do like things that I really didn't like. Things would go missing. Uh, clothes would get cut. She uh, would cut sleeves off my shirts, my favorite shirts, um, to make them sleeveless or cut my favorite jeans into shorts. She wanted to destroy the things that I loved. And she knew I hated it with a passion when she did that. And all my life, right up until she could never get something to cut, I would go into a panic when she would get in that mood and she'd want to start cutting things. I'm like, you stay away from my stuff. Because she used to do it to her stuff too. She would cut things, but she would wear them. She would cut my things knowing I would never wear them that way. So I... Uh, along the way decided that I wasn't going to do any fucking cleaning in that house because it made me miserable all the time. And my room would become a complete disaster. And I hated living in a disaster room like that. And it would take a lot for me to get around to fixing it, you know, cleaning it up. So there was an issue my whole life with that. And then when I, you know, owned the house and was living there with my mother... It made me not want to clean. I absolutely hated vacuuming her part of the house. I didn't like to vacuum mine either. But, you know, it, it was like I, I still held that all my life about I never did it good enough for you. I don't want to fucking do it at all anymore. So I was very lucky that for several years we did have personal aides that would come in and they would do that for her. I wanted her to have a clean room. Because I know that's what she loved. I just didn't want to fucking do it. Because I didn't want to hear it. And the few times that I did, she, you know, would say things like, Oh, well, no, I I'm going to put this chair up and I want you to do under this chair. And it's like, why can't you just let me clean something without telling me how to do it and what I have to do? So it was um, obviously an issue for me because I'm still upset by it. So the point I think I'm trying to make is that... What you teach a child just by showing them something and praising them and not criticizing in any way, that will follow them the rest of their lives. What you show them by example that you're not doing it good enough and uh, I don't want you to do that because it's not up to my standards and, you know, that will also follow you all through your life. Not only does it follow you, but it changes who you are in a negative way because that's what you hear all the time. I'm not good enough and I don't do this right. When I moved into this apartment, I clean every day something. I love it. I no longer am... Uh, tortured by the sound of a vacuum. I couldn't stand the sound of a vacuum living in my house because not only did I not vacuum good enough, she would come and vacuum at any time in my bedroom if I was sleeping, just, you know, have that vacuum next to my head because she wanted to disturb me, you know, and it was just, it was such a negative thing. And uh, so uh, I don't have that anymore. I absolutely love doing the little bit of cleaning that I do. There's not much to clean, but every day I do something and it keeps my place clean and I love it and I feel like I've done a good enough job.